Well, Asteroid fans, it's back. Well, back in the news anyway. 2024 YR4, that annoying rock that just refuses to go away, a rock that once was projected to be very likely to hit the Earth, at least very likely compared to other near-Earth objects that presented a possible threat to our planet. And now, according to recent observations from the James Webb Space telescope, it appears that this rock is far more likely to hit the moon than anything else. Once again, an unusually large percentage chance. Not very large if you compare it to other likelihoods, but still, unlike near-Earth objects like Apophis, the more we learn about this object's trajectory, the more likely it seems that it's going to collide with our natural satellite. And even though the the scientific community and astronomers and just about everybody else seem strangely unconcerned about this impact, the potential threat to our civilization is very real, and we ignore this threat at our peril. Good afternoon, space enthusiasts, and welcome to another Angry Bulletin. I have a quick update for you on my Australia ambitions, my planned trip for five weeks um, coming up in September and October. Just rolled that whole thing out last night and also uh, unveiled my GoFundMe, which has all the details as to what I intend to do during my time there. Visiting spaceports, going to the IAC convention, visiting Rocket Lab in New Zealand, and most importantly, visiting my more than 13,000 subscribers in Australia and New Zealand. But all that having been said, didn't expect to have a huge amount of success on the first night. And boy, was I wrong. Ten generous donors contributed enough to get me 10% of the way already to my final goal. I did not begin to imagine that this would be possible, but just amazing generosity on the part of the viewers. Again, I'm looking to bring you guys some fantastic and unique content in return for your support. This is not just something you're giving me so I can go on a fun holiday in Australia or anything like that. I'm going to be traveling Australia with the intent of bringing you spaceflight content, with the intent of bringing you UFO related content with one of the biggest mass sightings of UFOs in history. So in any event, if this is something you'd like to support, even as little as $2 um, would make a huge difference for me. Well, the GoFundMe is listed in the description, also pinned in the comments, and you can also contribute by buying a piece of merchandise, joining on Patreon. Any one of these things will help me get to Australia's I say spending five weeks there and bringing you folks some unique content that I don't think you've seen anywhere on YouTube before because again just like my European coverage this sort of stuff has been woefully neglected by most folks who cover space flight okay that's enough of that let's go ahead and move on to the topic at hand once again, we're talking about the 2024 YR4 asteroid, this uh, little nagging rock that won't go away, a rock that looked like it might have a significant possibility of impacting the Earth in 2032. Now that threat seems to have, have almost completely gone away, but there's still a growing possibility that it's going to hit the moon. And what continues to blow my mind is the fact that NASA doesn't seem to be very concerned about this. Space scientists across the globe don't seem to be expressing any concern about this possibility, as if a major impact on the surface of the moon isn't going to present any potential problems for us here on Earth. But is this actually the case? Is there truly no cause for alarm? Or would an impact of this magnitude, granted this is not a huge asteroid, but at the same time, it's sizable. Would an impact of an asteroid of this size really present no problem for us here on Earth? Or could it cause a great deal of disruption to our civilization and perhaps even throw our entire economy into a tailspin? 
An asteroid that burst onto the scene with an unusually high risk of striking Earth has just had its collision risk upgraded. In February of 2025, asteroid 2024 YR4's maximum collision risk with our home world when it swoops back around in 2032 was projected to be 3.1%. Now, its collision risk has risen to 4.3%, not with Earth, but the moon. That's not particularly high, sure, but it's high enough to be pretty exciting. And that's according to this article at sciencealert.com. In my opinion, pretty concerning, not just exciting. This impact wouldn't destroy the moon or even affect its orbit. Yes, I agree with that, but it would be scientifically interesting to see the formation process of a large crater and also really cool. 2024 YR4 announced itself with a bang. Initial calculations of its trajectory found that it could collide with Earth in December of 2032. The risk wasn't huge, but 3.1% is still alarmingly high for an event that could wipe out a city. This chunk of rock measures between 53 and 67 meters in diameter, comparable to the size of the asteroid that devastated Tunguska in 1908. Okay, that's not entirely accurate either, but we'll get to that in just a bit. Thankfully, it didn't take long for that risk to be downgraded to less than a fraction of 1%, effectively ruling out the possibility of an Earth 2024 YR4 collision entirely. The moon, however, remained in the firing line with a collision risk of 3.8%. But now, using new James Webb Space Telescope observations obtained in May of 2025, astronomers led by Andy Rifkin of Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory have refined that calculation, bumping the risk to 4.3%. That's probably still not the final word on the matter. Tracing an asteroid's trajectory takes repeated observations, but 2024 YR4 is now too far away for us to see. And by the way, it's going to be lost in the sun's glare for a considerable amount of time because of our orbital trajectory and this asteroid's trajectory. It will be very difficult to see this thing again until December of 2028, less than four years before the time of impact. We'll know with more precision then how likely the chunk of space rock is to smack into our natural satellite and give us a wild show and a bunch of science. Okay, so why is this article wrong? Why am I being so alarmist here when so many scientists don't think that this is any cause for concern, this potential impact? Well, it's because of what this object will do to the moon once it hits. It's going to be a crater somewhat bigger than the crater that was dug by the meteor crater event 50,000 years ago in Arizona. This impact created a crater 1.2 kilometers in diameter and it dug up an estimated 175 million tons worth of limestone and sandstone debris. That's a hell of a lot of debris and quite a crater, but 2024 YR4 will likely dig a crater 2 kilometers in diameter on the surface of the moon. Why is that the case? Well, because the moon has no atmosphere. There's absolutely nothing to interfere with this object as it plunges towards the lunar surface. Now, if you just calculate based on pi r squared, a two kilometer crater will actually produce three times as much debris as a 1.2 kilometer crater will create, meaning that we're looking at about half a billion tons worth of debris being ejected by an impact of this magnitude. And here's the problem. The moon's gravity is one sixth of the gravity of Earth, meaning that a lot of this debris is going to end up in lunar orbit. It's not just going to settle down 
back on the surface and then another substantial portion of the debris will actually be ejected from the moon's gravity and will end up being captured by the earth's gravity now granted most of the debris that's created by this impact is not going to be large enough to pierce the atmosphere and really threaten much of anything on the surface of the planet, but that's not the point. If only 1% of this debris manages to escape lunar gravity and plunges towards the Earth, that's over 5 million tons of debris that's going to be plunging towards our satellite network, which has become much more dense in recent years than it used to be. And although this debris will not be large enough to cause any sort of appreciable damage once it passes through the atmosphere, it will be more than big enough to knock out any satellites that ended up being in its path. So let's say that only 1% of all of the satellites we have in orbit, active in orbit at the moment, are affected by this debris. Just 1%, that's 117 satellites knocked out by this debris, and those 117 satellites will in turn create 117 clouds of new space debris in low Earth orbit that will in turn knock out more satellites, creating more debris. This is a phenomenon known as the Kessler syndrome. Some scientists believe that this phenomenon is already in process because of all of the anti-sat weapons tests and satellite collisions that have transpired over the last several decades. And anything that complicates this situation, in other words, adds more debris to the equation, makes the Kessler syndrome that much more likely. Let's say that each of these 117 satellites generates about a thousand pieces of debris. That's a conservative estimate, by the way, larger than 10 centimeters in size. Well, there's only 36,500 pieces of debris that size in orbit right now, suggesting that this would quadruple the amount of debris in orbit compared to what it is currently. That would almost certainly create a Kessler syndrome, knocking down on virtually our entire satellite network, our GPS network, and so many other things that our civilization and economy depend upon. So let's say we get lucky. Let's say that 2024 YR4 happens to impact the far side of the moon rather than the near side, and the vast majority of the debris that gets ejected from lunar gravity ends up in interplanetary space rather than spiraling towards our planet where it can be captured by Earth's gravity. Even if that were to happen, there's going to be millions of tons of debris knocked into lunar orbit. Remember, lunar gravity is not very strong, and an impact of this magnitude is going to launch lots and lots of debris into lunar orbit, creating a cloud of debris which is going to inhibit our ability of establishing anything resembling a permanent presence on the moon. Already, we do everything we can to minimize the amount of space junk that we send into cis lunar space. That was actually the justification that NASA used to force Astrobotic to crash their malfunctioning probe into Earth's atmosphere rather than risk it ending up flying around like an unguided missile in cis lunar space. A 2024 YR4 impact will create thousands of unguided missiles in lunar orbit that will likely stay there for years, if not decades. That's really going to throw a huge wrench into all of our Artemis plans. I fail to understand why astronomers are not recognizing this potential threat. Sure, if this was a relatively small asteroid, just a few meters in diameter or something, it would create an interesting impact worthy of scientific study. But instead, we're talking about an impact that's going to dig a bigger crater than any that we have found in recent history on our own planet. By recent history, I'm talking about in the last tens of thousands of years because if we want to make a comparison with the Tunguska event, 
that impact created no crater whatsoever. And the reason that happened is because probably it was a fragment of a comet rather than an asteroid. And so therefore that chunk of ice melted as it came through the atmosphere and detonated over the surface of the planet as opposed to impacting, therefore creating an airburst, which definitely flattened a vast area of Siberian forest, but didn't leave much of a crater and didn't kick up a lot of debris either. Plus, the Tunguska event remains a controversial event. There are still some scientists who don't believe that this was a traditional asteroid or cometary impact. For one thing, there isn't a lot of debris left over from the impact. Actually, virtually nothing has been dug up. And also, strangely enough, this region of the forest where the airburst supposedly took place has not experienced any regrowth whatsoever in a hundred years. All the trees surrounding it have grown back, but this area where the airburst actually supposedly took place? Nothing at all. Scientists have come up with bizarre theories as to why this happened, perhaps because it's some kind of new type of volcanism that we have never seen, or perhaps a chunk of antimatter, or a mini black hole, or even an alien spacecraft might have crashed here and not a comet. All of that being said, however, However, one thing we do know, 2024 YR4, if it does strike the moon, is not going to create a blast like the Tunguska event. It's going to dig a very deep crater. It's going to kick up millions of tons of debris. And in my opinion, that's a scenario we want to avoid, especially when you consider that we have the technology to do something about it now if we start planning for it now. So once again, I don't think that this is a threat that we should just be ignoring or taking lightly. I'm disappointed with NASA and the scientific community for not taking a harder look at the potential threat presented by this rock if it does indeed impact the moon. Granted, as you saw in the video, probably no threat to us here on the ground, but a considerable threat to the increasing amount of satellites. We have so many more satellites in orbit now than we did just a few years ago. And even if the debris from this impact were to take out a few satellites... Again, as we saw in the video, the consequences could be very significant. A Kessler syndrome that could take down virtually all of our satellites in low Earth orbit and perhaps elsewhere as well. This is something that should be taken seriously. And really, I don't think it would do any harm to look at the possibility of deflecting this asteroid off its course. I think it would be better for this asteroid to not hit the moon than hit the moon. To put this asteroid on a new trajectory that presents no threat whatsoever to the moon or the Earth. And not only that, developing the technology that is necessary to deflect this asteroid could prove very useful in the future if a much more dangerous rock were to be threatening our planet. But given the massive budgetary cuts that NASA has gone through recently, and given the general lackadaisical attitude towards this potential threat in 2032, I really don't see that happening. And I think that the only way that we're going to take the threat of near-Earth objects seriously is when something serious happens. And it's truly unfortunate that that's the only way we humans seem to learn our lessons. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, if you're interested in supporting my journey to Australia, all the details in the description. And also, the merch store closes on the 26th of this month. Um, and some of those items are definitely going to be going away. We'll be introducing some new ones as well, possibly. So stay tuned. Thanks again for watching, and as always, stay angry about space.